Carl and Mark McConnell on in today's episode. Dennis Willem was in my head. In today's episode, we're going to be making some dark eel. So, first of all, we'll start by adding one kilogram of pure. Okay. Um, I've already added the secret ingredient, but I won't tell you what that is. I'll tell you once it's brewed. Um, I usually use generous helping of the old syrup, which is great because it never comes off the spoon. Uh, so you can watch me put. Generous helping. There you go. There we go. 1.7 litres of water here. Hot water. That'll take it off the spoon. I'll take that bit of metal out in a minute. So we don't get it silver anyway, so it's not going to cause any issues. Half a liter of water. So, boil said kettle. Put a little on there. And get me a big spoon to fish out my other spoon, which will be guy hot. So, Good job I've got as best as hands. Uh, as you can see it's lovely and clean. So we'll put it in there with the rest of that water, which is sanitized water. And, and just mix all that up. And the lovely smell off that. I wish you could smell it on the video but Melt sugar down. Do you know a little bit about there, like that? Floor in this kitchen isn't exactly even, so. But, uh, we'll now uh, come back to you and we'll be adding the, I think it's just under 200 milliliters of water um, and then we'll be adding the malt extract and okay pour in the malt extract which I've just managed to pour all over the spoon not that it matters to be fair uh, it's been sitting in hot water to kind of make it a bit easier to pour. So we'll add the rest of our hot water, which I'll pour into the container, which does make it a wee bit easier to get out. I made dark ale a few times, uh, using various different recipes. A nice consistency. Be able to check out my some of my other recipes I've done stout and um, cayenne. If you're a good, good good cook, this goes really well with roast beef. I just like to drink beer like me. I just like to drink beer. I'm not interested in cooking, but I am interested in eating. 
So, I'm now going to add the rest of the hot water to this. Which uh, gets rid of uh, the rest of our extract. Uh, so, Probably just add a touch more to that because it's still a wee bit around the size. But it says to add two liters or thereabouts. Uh, I'm thinking it doesn't really matter as long as you wait for it to cool down. Um, can't obviously pitch the yeast at you know an astronomical temperature because you'll kill your yeast. So, but on the other thing there, you probably see me using, uh, which is what I do, I use brown sugar. Now, as you can see, there's probably still a wee bit there, but I don't think we're going to get out, but we could try. As I say, it doesn't really matter to the fact that I've used just over the two litres of water. Uh, of hot water uh, and always grab your tin with a towel or a mitten an oven mitten that way you won't burn yourself because uh, the last thing I want to hear is that you've left me a comment and you've burnt yourself so uh, I assume most of you have enough common sense not to burn yourselves anyway there we go and that's what I'm doing with that one. So that one's lovely and hot. I'm going to straighten the bin. And then now I'll stir this up. I'll now bring this up to about 22 litres of water using cold water from my tap which comes from the highlands of Scotland uh, comes from my loch called Loch and Chelsea and if you'd like to see anything about that um, I'll put in a wee uh, clip to where we actually went one day me and Tina on a run and we actually drove right past Walker Field. So. Our water here is lovely, it tastes great at the top. We've got hard, hard water here, water's not too soft. This roughly makes about thirty eight bottles of beer. If you like dark ale, of course. You have to like what you're drinking. Right, let's 
So we should be about the, yep, we're just about the 21 there, like, could probably add a wee bit more water, but. We'll leave that now, I'll get a hydrometer reading and we'll show you the hydrometer reading in a couple of seconds. So, if you give me a couple of seconds, which will be in a flash to yourselves. I'll take a wee hydrometer reading. Oh. Right. I'm getting 10.45 as a start, so I don't know if uh, my wife can zoom that in, Braveheart Scrapper. It's about 10.40 as a start, so uh, I'm now going to wait for the brew to uh, come down in temperature. I do have a temperature for you to so let there's a lot of in that. Um, Temperature thermometer in here. But I do believe it will be a wee bit too hot. We're sitting at about 30 on the temperature just now. Oh. Well, actually, no bad to be fair. So it's a pitch yeast at say at twenty one and I broke my digital thermometer so I'm gonna have to buy a new one. But you can see there that we're just at the twenty one there, you see where the mercury is. Uh you can just see it there. My hand's not very steady but Okay, so watch that doesn't get broken. Um so what I'll do now is I'll, I use Cooper's own yeast. Uh, you can use various different types of yeast. I have other yeast there myself. Um, I always tend to use the yeast that comes in the kits. To be fair, eh? you know I find them uh, very good. They all tend to start working within 12 hours. I just sprinkle over the top. I don't even bother to uh, shake it in. I just get a wee sprinkle. And there's seven and a half grams of yeast in that wee packet. And as I say, that takes between seven and ten days in the first fermentation to uh, ferment. And then uh, I'll bottle it. And in the next stage, I'll probably wait up to you, uh, here with me a second. To uh, bottle it. Uh, and that stout that's been uh, bottled on uh, it's a dark island, which is a dark ale from uh, Orkney. Uh, very nice. Um, but uh, the stout has got in it now. It's a very nice uh, stout. So, I'll put your panties on for watching, and we'll catch you all in the next one.